Now I want to take a look at WT Forms. WT Forms is a Python implementation of creating web forms. Uh, so it's specific to Python. It's a way that we can use a class to create the web forms. Uh, and then Python will take that class and turn it into the appropriate input boxes and uh, submit buttons and, and all those kinds of things. Uh, so that's what we're going to take a look at now. I've got just this basic application that I downloaded from GitHub uh, and I converted it over to be homework four and I'm, I'm running it in a virtual environment and uh, all those kinds of things. And so now that it's running, uh, it's just a very simple application that looks like this. So index just has hello world. Base uh, just has this little bit of formatting, this template. And app.py is just a very simple app.py just to make it function. Notice if you're going to use a parenthesis in there, you'll have to escape it. So now I want to use this WT form. So the first thing I need to do is go install it. And I'm going to install Flask WT forms. Sorry, Flask WTF. And Flask WTF is the Flask implementation of the generic Python uh, utility WT forms. Okay, and so now that I've added this new um, now that I've added this new utility, I can see Flask WTF is what I added, and it also adds WT forms. Uh, so I need to create a new requirements um, .txt file. see WT forms and I can see Flask WTF. Okay, so that's created. And then I'm going to use them in here. I'll have to import them. And I'm going to start off with a string field, which is just a simple text box. So from WT Forms, I'm importing the string field. I will also want to use validators. And the only one I'm worried about right now is data required. So if I have a database field that cannot be null, uh, then I'll need to make sure that there's something going into there. So data required is good enough for now. It's not a, a super good check, uh, but it'll work for now. The next thing I'll need to do is configure a secret key. So this would obviously be something longer and stronger and random. Uh, this is just for demonstration. Um, so WTF forms allows uh, allows us to uh, make some configuration changes to pre to prevent cross site request forgery. Uh, so we'll want to take advantage of that. Uh, and one of the things that we'll do for that is this secret key. Next thing we'll need to do is come down and create the class. I'm going to make an application about my friends, so I'm going to call the class friends. I'm actually going to call it friend form. OK, 
Okay, now that I've created my class, I want to use it. Create the method that goes along with that route. And then inside of here, I'm going to instantiate this friend form class with the reference variable form. So this class becomes an object form. And then that object, I want to validate it on submit. So I'm going to use these validators. And if it's true, if it is validated on submit, then I'm just going to simply uh, return my friend's name is uh, first name, last name. Uh, so I'm basically just doing string formatting here. Uh, I'll format it and then I'll pass it form, the object name, first name, the variable inside of that object, data, whatever they filled in. And then I'll do the same thing for the last name. Uh, so if it's not validated, then it'll just return uh, this uh, template, uh, which will be the add new friend template or the add friend that HTML template. And there I'm going to pass in the object form into the uh, variable form. Okay, so let's create the add friend. And when this object gets passed over as a, the variable form, then we'll pick it up in here and we'll be able to use it. Uh, so I'll create uh, just a little bit of header text here. Um, and then I'm gonna open a form. The form method is gonna be post uh, URL for. So I want Flask to automatically find the URL for this particular function, this add friend function. And then uh, now I'm going to do some form things. So the first one I'm going to do is that on that form object, I'm going to create a cross site request forgery token um, to prevent uh, cross site request forgeries. Then I'm going to grab the first name label and I'll put a first name text box. So this first name label is going to be this piece of text right here, first name. And then I will do the same for last name, the label, and then this is the actual text box that's with the last name variable. And then I've got a button down here to submit it and on submit, it's going to add the friend I'm going to do this action. Uh, to use this cross-site request forgery, we might need to do one other thing, but let's just test it real quick and see what happens. Looks like I have another error here. So let's investigate this. And my error was right here. I need to specify that this friend form is a last form. So let's try this. Okay, and then I can put in the first name and the last name. And if I add a friend, uh, it is validated correctly. And when it validates correctly, it's coming back with the first name data and the last name data, and it's just in this string format. So we have a secure form, and we're able to uh, grab the data from the form 
and pull it out uh, into uh, the variables back here and get the, the form data back out. 